Welcome back to the Professor Stuboy's channel. This is Professor Victoria and Professor Corey. We are continuing on with our equilibrium calculations series. This is episode three, so go back to episode one and two if you've missed those. And today specifically we are going to be going through a calculation that uses an ice table to calculate the equilibrium concentrations given K, and specifically we're going to be using um, and showing you how to use the distributive property. All right, let's take a look at what we have here. So we're given an equilibrium reaction, and I know it's an equilibrium reaction because I see the double arrow. That double arrow right there tells me that this is in equilibrium, and the next thing I check for are the states, because remember with our expression, our K, we um, do not include liquids or solids. So these are all gases. These will go into the expression. And they gave us a K value. And you know I can just kind of scaffold this up right away. I can say my K equals my equilibrium concentration of CO times the equilibrium concentration of the Cl2 over the equilibrium concentration of the COCl2. So it's really important. These are equilibrium concentrations that go into this expression. And we have this value, this 1.29 times 10 to the negative 2. K is less than 1, and that is going to be reactant favored. But what this question is really asking for is what are the equilibrium concentrations if we start with a certain amount of this reactant, the COCl2. So I'm just going to rewrite this. I'll rewrite it over here. I'm going to rewrite the reaction. This is the decomposition of cobalt chloride. No, it's carbon... Oh, yeah. it's not. I got confused. So cobalt would be capital C, small o. It is still decomposition into carbon monoxide and chlorine gas. So we've got 0.321 moles in one liter. And we want to, this is a, notice it's a KC here, so that's going to use concentrations, concentration and molarity. And we have moles and we have the volume of one liter, so that's going to be the same as 0.321 molar, 0.321 mole per liter. I can write that in here. So that much was introduced, so that would be an initial concentration. So how much of uh, the products do we have initially? Well, it doesn't say we have any, so if it doesn't list it, we can assume that that is zero. All right, so that makes the change really easy because if we can't go down from zero. So the, the change has to be positive on this side. How much? Don't know. So I'm just going to call it X. Do we have any equilibrium concentrations given? Well, not a one. We don't. So we're just going to express our concentrations at equilibrium in terms of X. Now, if we had any coefficients in this reaction, that would be included in the change. So if we had a coefficient of 2 for our carbon monoxide, for example, it would go up by 2x instead of x. So be, be careful of that. Okay, so I have my, um, my k equals up here. Uh, I have the k value, and I have these um, um, products over the reactants, and I'm just going to put in the x's for the products and the 0.321 minus x for the reactant. Let's set this up and see what this looks like. So my k is 1.29 times 10 to the negative 2, and this equals x times x over 0 0.321 minus x. And we don't have any um, exponents there because all of our coefficients are 1. Okay, so let's, um, let's move this out of the denominator. And this is really kind of the focus of this um, video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 0 0.321 minus x. So that will cancel over here, and it's gone. If I do something on one side of the equal sign, I have to do it on the other side. So I'm, I need to make some more space. I'm going to just write this over here. I'm going to have to multiply 0.321 minus x times my 1.29 times 10 to the minus 2. 
and then this is equal to x times x. I, I'm just going to write that as x squared. All right, so this is the distributed property. So if we have a number and we are going to multiply it by something with two terms and the point 3, 2, 1 minus x is two terms, we have to multiply both of those terms by the number, by the 1.29. So we're going to... I'm going to multiply this times this. Yep. And then I'm going to multiply this times this. So that's my first step and that's my second step. That one didn't come out very good. I'm just going to scroll this up, so be patient. Hopefully that isn't too weird. All right, so 1.29 times 10 to the minus 2 times 0 0.321. Is 0 0.0041409. And we're going to keep a few extra digits and round to our significant figures at the end. Okay, so what I did there is I went 1.29 times 10 to the minus 2 times 0 0.321. Now I have to multiply times negative x, and that's just simply going to be negative 1.29 times 10 to the minus 2x, and this equals x squared. Now we have three different terms here. We have, we have a, a squared term for x, just an x term, and a number. And in order to solve this, we're going to need to, to use the uh, quadratic equation. So when we need the quadratic equation, we are going to put everything on one side. So we set it all equal to zero and then we will show you the next steps. Yeah. So here's, here's, um, and I, I probably shouldn't even mention this because they always say not to show how to do something wrong, but what we do not want to do is divide by X squared. That does not equal zero. That would equal one. And so we don't want to do that. What we want to do, this is a positive x squared. And what I like to do right away, this just kind of helps me. x squared is the same thing as 1x squared. So I'm going to change that to 1x squared. So if I subtract 1x squared, I get 0. But I have to do the same thing on the other side. And what I end up with is 0.0041409 minus 1.29 times 10 to the minus 2x minus x squared. And or I, 1x squared. I'll yeah. put that one back in there. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't, you know, I couldn't subtract that from these other terms because they weren't the same. You know, when we do sub addition or subtraction, they had to be like terms. So if there was an x squared over here, I would have subtracted it from that value. Let's put the quadratic formula right up here. All right, can you help? talk about a, b, and c? Can you help me with the quadratic formula? Okay. X equals no. I don't even remember. Isn't okay. that terrible? Well, I'll show you how I did it. I used a quadratic equation solver. I know it's all over two a. <laughs> and what I needed, and what I needed to do, and there is a there's a formula. You can do this, you know, by brute force. But what you need to realize is once we get this set to zero. The number that goes with your x squared is your a term. The number that goes with your x is your b term. And the number without an x is your c term. Now, realize in this case, this b term is negative. So here's our formula. Here it is. x equals negative b plus or minus square root B squared. B squared minus 4AC. All over 2A. And boy, does that really mess people up when they are solving the quadratic formula. They don't divide the entire numerator by 2A, and that's really important. So we can use this formula and just plug in, you know, wherever there's a C, we can put in our point zero zero four one four zero nine. Um, the A is negative 1. And the b is, see the negative there, the b is negative 1.29 times 10 to the negative 2. Now alternately, you can go, if you have access to um, a computer and, and you're online, you can use a quadratic equation solver where you just put in the values for a, b, and c, and you can get um, your x results. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe graphing calculators can manage this sure. as well. Yep. What happens, notice here, we have a plus or minus in this expression. 
And what results is we end up with two values for x, and we call those roots. And when I put these into the, um, I, used, I just used a quadratic equation solver online, my roots were negative 0 0.0711 and 0 0.0582. So these, this is what x equaled. We get two results because of the plus or minus up here. And, and these were my two answers just provided for me. Now, and one of them won't, will always not make sense. So when you go back to your ice table here, and we have, if you have a negative x, that means that it goes down by an amount that's negative. That doesn't make sense. So we're going to just get rid of that negative term and so x is going to equal 0 0.0582 and now that we know what x is we can put it back into our equilibrium row of our ice table and solve for those equilibrium concentrations which is what we we need so i'm going to write the brackets that indicates concentration of co cl2 so this is 0 0.321 minus 0 0.0582 and that equals 0 0.263. So that's that one. And then my CO and my CL2 are just equal to X. So that's 0 0.0582. Molar. Units are in molarity. Excellent. So there you have it. That, I mean, that's a, a pretty complicated um, problem. We had to use the, the, the quadratic equation to, to get our x value, which is challenging. But um, what we really wanted to kind of focus on is using that distributive property here because, uh, you know, a lot of students, you know, have, they haven't done this in a long time and you, you just forget how to do that. So um, that is this section up in here where we had to multiply this by both terms inside of those parentheses. And in our next episode, we are going to move on and do a little bit more difficult um, and complicated algebra, including the distributive property, but also we're going to be looking at the FOIL method. Um, and so come back and learn some more algebra and learn some more equilibrium concentrations with the Professor Du Bois. All right, thanks. Stay tuned for episode four.